What up, everybody? It's your girl July from Kickback Couture, and today we are finishing up the mixer series, and I'm talking about the fader section. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm going to collapse this, these menus. So right now I have the 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 input section, and I have the send effects section. So I'm going to collapse these by hitting these buttons over here and now we're only viewing the fader section which we can also collapse like that first thing I want to talk about is this width knob so the width knob is going to decrease the stereo width as you move it to the left so with complete stereo width which is how you just heard it it sounds like this and as we move it to the left, it narrows more and more until it is in mono. So there is reverb on this. So what I'm going to do is bypass the reverb so that we only hear the sample. So this is the mono signal and this is the stereo signal. and it actually appears to be a mono sound. So with that being said, we can use a different example. All right, cool, let's go ahead and pull this mono. This is mono, zero width. This is at 127, all the way to the right. All the way to the left, all the way to the right. Now, another thing we can do with that is the knob right next to it allows us to pan it from left to right. So if we want to do that, all we do is turn the knob to the left to pan it to the left. Turn it to the right to pan it to the right. And everything in between is possible. Command click to get that back to its original value. And the first button that I pressed at the beginning of this video, nearly, was solo. And that allows us to solo the sound so we hear it by itself without interference from everything else. There's also the mute button right next to it. So it mutes the sound. Next thing is this meter. These meters are pretty much obsolete and I do not use them in any way when I'm mixing. I tend to use my ears. The actual metering system I use is Flower Loudness, Flower Audio Loudness Meter, and I've done a video on this before. I'll go ahead and drop it, well, throw it up above so that you can check that out it is an older video and some of the things i said are outdated so if you would like more up-to-date information if you are confused also check out this video all right now moving on is this fader right here and this allows us to attenuate the volume so let's go ahead and solo this again You would mostly want to use this for automation. This is especially useful for automation in a post-production situation where you are editing dialogue and an actor says something or a voiceover actor says something really loud and you need to attenuate it, turn it down, or so on and so forth. So in order to automate this, you would just right click edit automation it will create an automation clip for you in the sequencer and then from there you can automate it so this automation clip is going to be somewhere down here or I can't see it for some reason oh right there in front of my face all right so it's right here and I can go crazy with this automation. Or I can do something that is a lot more thought out. 
but for the sake of this tutorial that is how you would start to do that so the next thing I would like to talk about we can clear automation also there is this drop down arrow here in order for us to create a bus you can also just uh, right click if you don't click it doesn't matter right click and left clicking do the same thing so you can create a bus as you can see I have a melody group and this is already routed to my melody group and buses get these red fader knobs right here so you can tell which one is a bus and which one isn't based off of this red color if I decide I want to create a parallel channel I can also do that by right clicking and then right here in this menu create parallel channel we will see our parallel channels are distinguished by a shorter uh, I don't know what you would call this but it's shorter than the other ones so if you want to see this easier let's make a sky blue you see that it ends earlier I don't know what to call this as always but that is how you create a parallel channel and I will talk about the difference between I'll talk about when you would want to use a output bus and a parallel channel respectively in a separate video this red highlight here lets us know which fader we have in focus you can hit this sequencer button to bring you to this mix channel in the sequencer and you can hit the rack button to bring you to the mix channel within the rack or the specific instrument however you would like to look at that you can change the name down here and you can also change the color by right clicking bright gray now moving on let's talk about this area here this is the master fader section so this is the master output bus every sound that we have here is routed here what we have up top at the left is the reset button so if your sound clips and it is coming up red once we hit this reset button it will get rid of that clipping I don't want to do that because I don't want to make anyone deaf or blow out anyone's speakers but for a quick example let's solo this kick and find somewhere the kick is playing I'm gonna pull up the input section and we see that it clipped here once I hit this reset button it will get rid of that clipping and then I can figure out what the source was turn down whatever it was and continue my mix next we have this meter and as I mentioned before I do not use it um, we have the spectrum window as well and this will show every the spectrum including every sound as long as you have this fader selected moving forward I do want to backtrack a little bit and actually not move forward the this meter right here corresponds with the meter in the master section if you may not have known now you know it is this meter here you have these four tabs here and it is the big meter tab and you can also change the mode here with this button it has its own fader and you never want to use this fader for monitoring purposes you would rather use this control room level here and this will allow you to change your monitoring you don't want to mess with this at all I do use this however to set up a outro fade um, in my template and I'll do a template video at a later date and my outro fade is here that is the only place I use my master fader master outputs output bus fader well tongue twister all right next we have a delay compensation button 
which corresponds with this down here in the transport and I can go ahead and get rid of my transport if I would like to and uh, from there we can talk about these buttons here this is the focus as we mentioned before but this will take you to the master section in the sequencer right here where we can automate whatever we would like to and um, this button will take you to the rack master section in the rack now going back to the sequencer we see that we have master level we can also automate the sends from the master level performance dynamics inserts whatever the case may be whatever we have on this master channel strip we can automate it now we have this mute all off button so if I have this muted this muted this muted and this muted rather than clicking on everything separately to unmute it I can click this button here same goes for solos let's say I have this muted this soloed this muted this muted this soloed and it's crazy in order to speed that up all I have to do mute all off solo all off now this dim 20 decibels button it literally dims your signal volume by 20 decibels so if somebody's next to you talking and you like mixing really loud you can just click this button here and it will turn it down rather than you having to reach over and turn your knob if it's far away that pretty much covers it for the master fader um, we can change the control room out if we would like to also I uh, don't really want to discuss that part anymore. The last thing I would talk about in this video is this yellow indicator we see here. This sets the remote base channel. So this is important when we are using a controller and controlling a specific channel or whatever the case may be. You can watch this video I'll throw it up there if you would like to know more about setting up your controller to work with your DAW so for example what I mean is I have an MPK 61 uh, and I can control my faders with my faders so for example we see this knob moving here this is my melody bus I can control this with this knob and I can control everything else likewise. So if you like this video, give it a like, comment down below, let me know what you would like to see next. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you would like to see next. It's all culture, kick back, and cook up.